Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Conerance. I'm one of the owners of Advanced Roofing. I'm going to be moderating today's Lunch and Learn in the next few over the next few months. Uh, we've got some excellent content lined up with you today uh, with uh, Tropical Roofing Supply and then as well as our internal team. I want to thank everyone for making the time to be here today. I uh, can't think of a better way to knock out some 2021 goals, just kicking off February. Uh, today, we're going to cover roof coatings and how to send your roof budget into these difficult times. Um, at the end of the presentation, we'll be sending a $15 Uber Eats credit as your virtual lunch and learn experience. We're also going to be raffling off an espresso coffee machine. So please stay on the call until the end and we'll be announcing the winner. Up next, uh, in about two weeks, we have a presentation from our HVAC division, Advanced Air Systems. They're going to be going over the different options to comply with OSHA's new indoor air quality guidance. That's going to be on February 18th, and I'd love to see you there as well. I'm going to be handing over the presentation to Rob Cornerance, our founder and CEO. We are encouraging questions. I'll be watching the chat board and incorporate the different questions during the presentation at the end. The chat and polling will be at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Rob, the mic is yours. Thank you, Kevin, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting hour of learning more about roof coatings, where they're at today. A little bit about my background. Grew up in Long Island, New York. Uh, worked for a roofing contractor through high school and college. He had me open a branch right out of college in Atlanta, Georgia. Moving down to South Florida in 1982. And then I borrowed $15,000 from my dad, bought a pickup truck and just grew the business, advanced roofing, same name, same phone number, same location over the last 38 years. As you see in the picture below, that's uh, Kevin and Mike, my two twin boys that are in the business with me and my grandson. So we got another third generation coming. We plan to be around for a long time, which is very unusual for contractors, especially roofing contractors in this space. So uh, very community minded. We, um, we, we all believe that uh, our clients are our most important asset as well as our associates. So we uh, started early on, including everything around the building envelope. That would be the air conditioning. For over 30 years, we've had an air conditioning division, lightning protection. Uh, we do all the coatings, the re-roofing repairs. And then we also manage and take care of your roof asset management. Every warranty that you get requires that you do preventive maintenance. And I don't care if it's a coating or re-roof or whatever it is, you should be getting up there at least once and preferably twice a year, looking over what's going on on, on your roof. Uh, we, uh, we expanded from South Florida many years ago and we're all over the state today. We have uh, all these branches, headquarters in Fort Lauderdale, Jupiter, Sanford, Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville, Fort Myers, and Miami-Dade. We just bought a $2 million facility down in Miami-Dade. All of our places, we own brick and mortar. We, we want our customers to know we're in this for the long haul. We're not just a you know, company. A lot of national companies come in, they'll rent the little space to put a van in and say, yeah, we're a national company and we're here to serve you. They form an LLC for that little branch. And guess what? As soon as the problems happen, they're gone. So we're here to stay long, long history of 38 years with great clients. And many of you guys are on here and ladies are on here today. So thank you for joining. Some of the objectives today are just what can you use for budgeting tools when you consider coding and what roofs qualify for a roof coating. There are coating companies and I'm sure you've seen it on Fox News and it's actually Richard's product, but the, you know that's all they do is one type of roof, silicone roofing. And if you only have one solution, it's like going to a car dealer and saying, hey, this is the car we're going to sell you. This is why it's great. We, we don't do that. We have all types of alternates, whether you need to tear it off, whether you need to go over it or coatings right. So we, we have the gamut of everything. We're professionals. Broward County Environmental has actually called on myself and Richard Zigabone, who's up next, to help them write the new code on reflectivity on roof coatings. So that says a lot when we're considered experts in this industry and you will see a new code in Broward County, uh, more reflect uh, reflectivity, similar to what they do in California. These are all good things for the environment as well as for your roofing. So uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce my friend for as long as I've been in this business, Rick, Richard Ziggelbaum, the owner. And uh, go ahead, Richard, take it away. Tell us a little bit about you. 
Certainly. Thanks a lot, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here today. And it's really a pleasure to work with companies like Advanced who take their job very, very seriously and they're dedicated to doing it right. And I think many of you know, in the roofing industry, you don't always get people of integrity and stuff like that. And I think companies like Advanced and Tropical have tried to separate themselves from the pack and, and, and bring some value, bring some quality, bring some innovation to the industry. Um, we specialize in coatings. We started in Florida over 60 years ago. We've been lucky enough to advance um, to grow our company. We have three factories now. We have a national footprint. We're in Los Angeles. We're in Houston. And because we're in the Sun Belt, we've become experts at reflective coatings, protecting your buildings and keeping the roof in good integrity for a longer period of time has become much more part of the industry. We specialize in making safe, environmentally friendly, cost-effective, scientifically verified methods of protecting and restoring the integrity of your roofing substrate. We are been around for a really long time, so we tend to use our 65 years of experience to enhance time-tested procedures, such as coating your roof, but using new and innovative materials that give greater longevity, better stability, and longer warranties for um, roof coatings. We see, as the economy has had some issues as of late, that protecting your commercial buildings for longer periods of time, making your roof substrate sustainable, not taking it to the dump, putting less strain on your air conditioner is going to be something that grows. Companies like mine and our competitors have advanced the formulation so much in the last 10 or 15 years that we can offer the same kind of warranties that a roofing manufacturer offers on sheets. But these are roofs that are meant for restoration and they are basically applied in situ by companies like Advance that are a chosen applicator for us. And with that, to tell you more details about what we do, our area salesperson that runs the District of South Florida is Pablo Aconda, who's done a wonderful job with us. So Pablo, please tell us a little bit about the details. Thank you, Richard. Thank you all for being on this call. Um, I'm joined actually by, uh, or with uh, Chris Nillis, who is our regional sales director. Hi, Chris. How you doing, um, He's going to be helping me out. If there's any questions that you guys have, feel free to text those. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, I believe the first, um, we have a poll. We actually have a poll to start off with. Um, I'm going to pose a question. True or false, coatings can lead to increased energy efficiency. We've got a couple of seconds to... So pretty much everybody says true, which yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the purpose of this call. That is correct. Uh, coatings can and will provide energy savings, make cooling the underlying building more efficient by reflecting the sunlight and the UV waves away from the roof surface, keeping the building cooler in the process and having the air conditioning units run less. Uh, on a non-reflective roof surface, temperatures can reach 160, 170 degrees. Uh, it absorbs the heat into the building and it softens the roofing membranes, uh, potentially damaging them as well over time. Uh, these roofs can get so superheated that you could actually leave footprints in the membrane and track the cement back into the building, leaving a mess. I've done that, so <laughs> don't want to be that guy. Um, next slide, please, Bill. So yeah, so you can see here that we have the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go back to this, the other side, I'm sorry. The, the uh, diagram here is the uh, reflective uh, uh, properties of the uh, coatings. Uh, you get 80% of that UV reflected off of the roof and that is keeping uh, everything cooler and Oh, the next slide, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Next slide, please. So yeah, here we're on to roof coatings and the background. Um, you can see in the diagram uh, to the right, uh, you have your roof assembly system. Uh, you start from the deck and then go up to uh, the membranes, which are your uh, roof membranes and your roof coatings. And then you have your uh, 
your coding background. Uh, the Chris, could you take this next slide, please? Yeah. Yeah. So, with uh, the background of the of the roof coatings, it does extend the life of the of the uh, building itself. Uh, pretty much puts the puts the entire roof to sleep, and you know, restoring it and continuing to further uh, extend the life of the actual of the actual roof itself. So it's less disruptive as far as the strengths go. It's less disruptive. You're not opening up the roof. You're not disturbing the tenants inside the building. It's less expensive. And it's also uh, uh, for local leaks, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's a great patch and repair. Uh, it provides um, easy uh, easy way to, to go about your uh, roof assembly. So the challenge is um, it's not meant for all roofs. This is not necessarily a one size fits all, but there are challenges with uh, with silicone, if you know, if you have an oversaturation of the roof, and that's what we'll get into the next slide. So, uh, Bill, next slide. Yeah, I could take this next. One. I'm sorry, technical difficulty on that one. Um, so yeah, so we have what you see here are the roof coating types um, and the applications of those types of uh, roofing. Uh, as you can see, these types of coatings have a, uh, sometimes a much higher degree of technicality to the application. So you're gonna need to have some people who have training in both the application and also in um, applying the products from the manufacturer in order to get the warranties. Um, some of these you can see are uh, rolled on, sometimes even brushed on with a paintbrush. Um, you sometimes have to go old school to put down some of these coatings uh, to get into some of these areas that are harder to uh, reach. Um, but then, yeah, you also have your sprays and you have some other technical equipment that we'll discuss later on with the systems. Uh, next slide, Bill. So these are the four types of uh, coatings that we're going to discuss in today's presentation. Uh, you have your acrylic, you have your silicone, your polyurethane, and your PMMA. All of these will have their own slides and they will have their own um, benefits, they'll have their own um, uh, benefits and also their own um, issues or uh, considerations when using those. Uh, one thing that we want to uh, relay to you guys during the course of this uh, demo and presentation is that not all coatings, not all systems are going to be uh, uh, good for all systems. You're going to have some roofing issues that you cannot use any of the coatings you'll have some of the systems that you would be able to use multiple type of solutions, uh, but it's imperative that you guys know that there's not going to be one particular coding that will be able to be a universal. There's going to be issues uh, with all those. And sometimes you can't use any coatings at all. One thing to note on these is that you see the reflectivity are basically, they're all pretty reflective, but you see that the tensile strength and also um, the ponding water durability are uh, widely different, uh, particularly with the acrylics and some of the others. Uh, ponding water is defined by uh, standing water on a roof surface uh, over 48 hours after rainfall. And tensile strength is the resistance of material to a force tending to break it apart, measured as the maximum tension the material can withstand without tearing. I got that definition from online dictionary. So. <laughs> um, the, the durability of the coating is what we're talking about with that um, feature. Ne next slide, Bill. So the first coating that we're going to talk about is the acrylic or the elastomeric coating. Uh, it's the low cost, basic reflective roof coating. It's a, a thick, durable, and flexible roof coating. Uh, with resins added for adhesion having uh, between 40 and 55 percent solids per volume. Uh, the coverage rates and the mill thicknesses we're going to discuss later on um, in a separate topic. Um, acrylics are usually or typically water-based or solvent-based, so it makes them easy to clean up, easy to apply, um, low, low cost, low fuss. Um, the biggest caveat with these type of coatings 
is that they do not hold up well to ponding water. Uh, acrylics under ponding water will start to crack, curl, and eventually peel up. And they will take that surfacing that we talked about, uh, the granules on the membrane, along with them as they peel up. So it exposes the membrane to the UV and ultimately breaks it down quicker. Another consideration with the acrylics is that they weather a lot faster than the other coating types that we're going to talk about. Um, the, the coating's going to wash off with rain a lot sooner, and you're left with left, uh, less millage, which is uh, an aspect that we're going to also discuss. Um, another consideration is because of the lower solids by volume content of the, of the acrylics, you're going to need to apply more of it per uh, 100 square feet per area than you would with some of the other systems that have heavier or higher uh, solids by content. Uh, acrylics are best used or best specified to use um, on slope roofs, um, on walls, uh, for touch ups, for uh, repairs, aesthetics. Um, that's one of the nice features of the acrylics is that you can paint over them with uh, traditional paint afterwards. It would be a nice white base coat to coat up. Next slide, please. So now we are going to go to the next uh, type of coating, which is the silicones. Uh, these have been in the market for a shorter period of time than some of the others, but they're gaining prevalence primarily because of its resistance to ponding water. Silicone is moisture cured. So that means that it starts to harden once uh, it's exposed to the humidity in the air. That means that it will uh, harden at a quicker rate than the acrylic sometimes, or uh, double the time that it takes, or I'm sorry, half the time that it takes for the acrylics to dry. Um, that means that you'll be able to beat out a storm, uh, making it a better coating to use in rain prone areas. Uh, although you may not need a primer to apply the silicone, a bleed blocking coat over an asphaltic surface or over patches and cement may be required. Uh, this is to prevent the uh, asphalt from bleeding out into the coating, staining it, and it may also be a requirement from the manufacturer uh, in order to obtain the warranty. Uh, silicones are usually low in VOCs, which are volatile organic compounds. And some may be used in conjunction with cisterns or uh, potable water systems, which have NSF accreditation. Uh, noted here is the silicone is typically a one pass application. That's important to note because uh, being it's one pass, you don't have uh, uh, the time between the passes uh, that would cause for uh, the roof to get dirty or to get damaged, which sometimes some of these multi-pass systems are prolonged because of those. And it adds to the time and also to the amount of work you have to do to the roof in order to complete the project. Uh, there's a term in roofing called phasing. Uh, it's uh, also traditional roof uh, systems, the application. Sometimes you have to do that because you have to let the trades come and do their work before you can finish. Sometimes like we've had now with COVID, it's impossible to get up onto a roof um, the uh, jobs are being postponed or delayed until things open back up. Uh, the issue with doing that, like I said, is the more time that the roof is left exposed and not finished, you end up with problems like dirt accumulation and also other things that need to be addressed before you can finish. There are limitations with using the silicone. Uh, two of the big ones are that once you go and put silicone down, you cannot coat over it with anything else but silicone. Nothing else will stick to it. So if you do a repair with silicone, you're going to end up with uh, uh, you're going to end up with a situation where you're going to either have to scrape off the silicone or recoat over the silicone with silicone. The other issue is that it gets pretty slippery um, once the finished coat is cured, especially in the rain or early in the morning. So um, the coating is going to be best used in areas where you have light foot traffic. You know, you don't really have people walking on it. So no walkways, no patios. Uh, you could put walkway pads down. You could put a uh, silica surfacing, but um, 
the reality is you don't want to be using this where there's going to be pedestrian traffic. The great part of it is to be completely monolithic, seamless, no chance for water intrusion, and that's what ultimately what you would like. So, so that's what's great about silicone. Yeah, that, that's one of the benefits of all the coatings. Is once you're done, you really don't have any seams uh, up on the roof for the water to accumulate and then go through. Uh, next slide, please, Bill. So now we're going to talk about polyurethane coatings. Um, this should not be confused with the spray foam or spray polyurethane foam roofing. That is a field prepared applied roofing system. And although that needs to have a, its own coating and its own surfacing put on it, that's not what we're going to be talking about. This is uh, polyurethane coatings that we are discussing here. Um, one of the main benefits of the coating is its durability. Uh, especially with the acrylics, it, it does not scuff as easily. Um, when people walking on it, it's not going to tear or to drag as much, uh, making it ideal for patio type of applications, um, tile overlays, areas where you're going to have limited traffic, maybe not uh, pedestrian walkway malls or plaza decks, but uh, where you need a little more durability. Now, coming with that, the inverse of that, the durability is that it tends to be a little more rigid. So um, you don't have as much pliability with this type of coating as you do with the others, which tends to cause it to crack, especially in areas where there's movement in the roof. So that's a consideration uh, when using this product. Uh, one all benefit of the urethanes is that they tend to stay cleaner longer. Um, so if the aesthetic that you want it to be bright and white is important, that would be a consideration for you in using the, the urethanes. Now, one of the main downsides of the urethanes is that um, it, it is very uh, susceptible to humidity fluctuations. Um, you have to be really careful uh, what the conditions are when you're applying the, the, the urethanes and also the humidity amount on the surface of the roof, the moisture that's in the roof or on the surface. Because uh, this is where usually when people have problems with the urethanes, this is where it comes into play that there's uh, humidity or moisture trapped when they coat down the urethanes, and then it tends to either blister or delaminate. Uh, so that, that's what you want to try to avoid when using uh, the urethane coating system. Uh, sometimes the specifications, uh, warranty, uh, manufacturer's warranty requirements stipulate that you have to have three passes, uh, sometimes more, including a, a primer coat in order to obtain a warranty. So this again is adding time to the application and adding instances where delays could possibly cause issues later on. Next slide. All right, so now we're gonna talk about PMMA. PMMA or polymethyl methacrylate, very durable fluid and field applied roof coat. One of the trade names for PMMA is plexiglass, which in other variations used for basketball backboards, uh, ice arena glass, uh, even prosthetics. Once it's cured, the PMMA will harden uh, to the point where you can withstand heavy pedestrian traffic, even cars driving on it won't drag the coating. So it makes it ideal for uh, plaza decks, heavy foot traffic areas, parking garages, places where you need to have something that's very uh, durable and able to withstand that kind of uh, abuse. Now, um, the difference between the PMMA that they use for roofing is that it is much more pliable. If it was rigid like a backboard, it would crack and, and not be uh, usable as a roof type of uh, coating. Um, one of the benefits of PMMA as well is that you can use it in areas where you have um, sprayed cooking oils, animal fats, places where traditional or other, the other types of coating may break down. Um, this is a lot more resilient to that kind of abuse. So it's a very heavy wear, heavy um, abuse type of product. Um, you can use this in conjunction with traditional roof membranes to make flashings. So if you have problem areas, uh, flashings that crack, hard to reach areas, PMMA is a very good choice for that. And also if you have any uh, areas on uh, high-rise buildings where traditional roofing is going to be almost impossible to do, PMMA would be a very good option for that. 
uh, one of the downsides of the PNMA is the high cost uh, of the products and also of the system in total because it is like a multi-pass, highly technical type of application. Guys that are doing this really need to know what they're doing or else um, you know, they're gonna end up with waste and it's not a sustainable practice. Another issue with the PMMA is that it is, uh, you do have an odor um, also with the urethanes as well, but it's gonna be something that if guys are using the PMMA, you have to consider that before application, uh, people in the building could be affected by it, either close the vents or you need to have the building empty before doing this application. Next slide, Bill. So yeah, so now we're gonna get to the uh, knowing uh, the product's primary uh, performance. What is it that you want the roof system to, uh, what is it that you want it to achieve? What, 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 what's the purpose of this, uh, of this project? Um, when you have your initial, uh, your initial inspection by the qualified roofing contractor, he's gonna go out, when he looks at that, that deck, that, that cross section, uh, the assembly that we looked at before, he wants to see if there's any issues, if there's any noticeable problems in the roof. But part of his solution is gonna be, what is it that we're trying to achieve with the system? Um, there's two different types of uh, performance objectives with the coatings. The first one is going to be reflectivity. Uh, you want to reflect the roof, you want to maintain the, the system that's already installed on the roof um, using this coating to prolong the life of the roof. Um, if you have a roof that this is the main priority, then your roof is probably in pretty good condition. It's already being regularly maintained. You don't have big leaf issues. You don't have areas that have saturation. Um, this is the, the primary candidate for a roof coating system. Roof that is, is in good shape and all you're doing is using the coating to be a reflective agent. This type of roof would probably last up to 20 years. Um, you would add additional 20 years to the roof system by putting this coating on. So that's what we're trying to, that's one of the tips you get is, yeah, that's what you're trying to achieve is have a roof be in a condition that you could do this. Unfortunately though, when these guys get called out, it's usually because there's already a, an issue and you're looking at uh, the performance uh, objective with the roof coating, which means that you're gonna have to go, those areas where you have issues in the roof, you're gonna have to go and do the repairs or replace before you put the coating down. Now, the coating wouldn't act as just a reflective, uh, a protective coating. It would also act to augment the moisture blocking properties of the installed assembly. So, you're using the, the coating that you're applying as an added layer of protection against the moisture. And now, as we noted before, and we noted again later, um, not every roof is going to be a good candidate for coating. Uh, you can't, uh, there's gonna be some roofs that you can't put coating down uh, because they're too damaged. The type of roofing that's on there doesn't allow for the coating to be installed. So, Definitely that initial uh, inspection by the contractor is key. Um, next slide, please. So now we're gonna, where we see some pictures here of some uh, before and after restorations. Uh, the, on the left, you have the metal decks that have rust on them. These can be restored uh, by knocking off the oxidation with wire brush. Uh, encapsulating it with a primer. Um, sometimes the panels need to be repaired or replaced before going over with the coating. Uh, in the middle, you have your uh, BUR asphaltic roof. Uh, that top picture there is the roof that has been prepared with a bleed blocker. Um, the secondary picture there, uh, sometimes what ha happens is uh, the seams uh, will be in a condition that you need to treat all of them or in the case of uh, systems like single ply, all of the system or all the seams uh, in the system, including the, the penetrations would have to be addressed and treated, um, reinforced before you go and put the final coat in. So that's where you see that, that web work there. That was all the seams had to be uh, coated beforehand. 
Now on the right, you see uh, the single plies. Single plies may not need to have a primer installed uh, before you put the coating on, but um, the seams will probably need to be reinforced. So these details, all the details would probably be specified by the manufacturer before the contractor went um, and applied the roof coating to the roof. I think with that, I'm done for now. Um, I'm going to pass off to Clint, who I think has another poll. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Thanks, Pablo. A lot of good stuff to go over there. Uh, yeah, we're going to start off with a poll. And uh, today's question is, how long can a coating extend the life of your roof? And give everybody a, a couple of seconds to answer the question and get moving. Survey says uh, 25 years or 20 years is the, uh, the the popular answer. And and I think the the reality of the of this situation is all of these are correct answers. And this comes to really about system selection and uh, you know what, what type of products are being used, how they're being applied, and, and what thicknesses or reinforcings are going in there, because we can design systems to really meet any goal that's out there five years up to 20 years. So uh, there's not a wrong answer in that list. And, and a lot of that comes down to just, you know, answering questions about what your goals are as a property manager, as a building owner, and, and taking a look at, at what you're trying to achieve and then building a solution that works for you. But one of the big messages is, and, and it's been brought up a couple of times already to this point, is that coatings aren't necessarily for every roof. Um, when we look at, you know, what qualifies and what doesn't qualify, Two of these things that are listed here are really kind of yes or no answers that we need to ask ourselves about just, can we do a coating whatsoever? Uh, and th that's that current condition of the roof system and the age of the roof. Now, uh, there's not a magic number on age. We've seen roofs that are 10 years old that shouldn't be coated. And we've seen roofs that are 30 years old that, that can be coated. Um, so age isn't one of those things that there's a line in the sand. It actually comes down to how was it originally installed? How has it been maintained? Because what we like to say is uh, we can revive a roof. We can restore a roof. We can bring it back to life to a point. But if it's already dead, it's, it's kind of past the point of return. What does that mean? If, if all of the seams of your existing modified bid is falling apart uh, and, and the, the substrate below it's been soaked, we're gonna call that a non-starter and, and we'll have to look at a secondary solution for several different reasons. One, it would primarily fail before uh, any, any reasonable design period would, 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 we would expect out of it. But two, there's also code-driven uh, requirements in regards to moisture surveys that uh, the Tropical team will talk about in a little bit as well. So that current condition of the roof system is, is, is really clear. Um, now, these other four, four factors that we look at, the slope of the roof, whether or not there's ponding water, chemical exposure, and in your heat and your UV exposure, those are all things that we now get into, okay, well, we've said, yes, we can coat it. What products make the most sense for us? If we're on a sloped roof, an acrylic may very well be the best solution you have with no standing water and very good drainage. Uh, but if you have ponding water and acrylic is an absolute disaster, it'll be gone within a year or two. It's an absolute, it'll fail immediately. So it, it, we, we kind of weigh these things and, and we, we look at what is the best solution once we determine whether or not we can coat or not. Um, there was a good question asked uh, in the chat forum earlier by Jessica, which was, you know, based on these four options of the, you know, kind of the, the, the primary coatings that are available in the marketplace, what's the best coating for a condominium in between the ocean and in the intracoastal? And, and that's a tough question to answer without seeing specifics, right? We know that you're going to encounter salt air. We know that uh, obviously the UV in Florida, whether you're on the coast or inland is, is extreme. We know that the wind is extreme. So when we, when we start looking at that, we say, you know, hey, the truth is probably all four of those can fit. What is the best? Uh, is really going to be determining uh, determined by looking at these these factors here. What is the slope of your roof? Does it have heavy foot traffic? Pablo talked a lot about foot traffic. Now there's ways that we can reinforce uh, silicones or or acrylics to be more durable, but you can't make them as durable as a PMMA or a polyurethane. So you really kind of have to take all those factors into play while we're trying to determine 
what coding is best for the project that you're looking at. Now, um, I actually saw a, another question come through the Q&A earlier uh, asking if we can coach single ply TPOs and Richard answered it in text, but we'll expand on that a little bit more here. And we ask ourselves, well, which roofs in from a system perspective can be coded? We already talked about, you know, roofs that are already dead and completely falling apart, not good candidates for coding, saturated, not good candidates for coding. But from an assembly standpoint, single plies, metal roofing systems that are sloped and, and have good drainage, uh, modified bitches, bitumen systems uh, can all be coded uh, very well. We, we shy away from these gravel surface to BURs. Um, anybody that says that you know you can pour 10 gallons up here and, and get good performance, uh, there's limited I, uh, ideas around that. Resaturants can be done, but they're really not true coatings. These are uh, what we call resaturants, and it's it's a different kind of uh, system. So you know when we're talking about performance coatings, silicones and urethanes, we like to stick to flat roofs uh, without gravel surfacing or any metal roof system that's out there. And uh, as long as it's just not past its useful life. So it's more of a pre a proactive approach. Um, now, when we talk about budgeting cheat sheets, we like to leave everybody with some tools and some budgeting cheat sheets to look at. Um, you know, we, we look at these investments and, and we kind of gave you a sliding scale on the investments earlier in the presentation. Um, they're kind of listed top to bottom from least expensive from an investment standpoint to most expensive uh, from an investment standpoint. But we can see these coding systems range anywhere from $250 to $8 a square foot uh, with acrylics starting down in that $250 range and PMMAs ranging up to $8 and sometimes even north of $8 a foot for these high performance waterproofing systems like PMMAs where we have traffic and vehicular uh, foot traffic, vehicular traffic, a lot of wear and tear, putting them underneath planters or water fountains. Um, they can range up to $8 a foot. Uh, one interesting thing that has happened recently, and a lot of people probably know about this, if, you, if you're sitting in our other, other lunch and learns and getting uh, CEUs out of other presentations, the building cone change that was adopted uh, on December 31st of, of 2020, where we adopted the new Florida building code, has really driven a lot of uh, new design changes for uh, normal roof systems, uh, typical roof systems, single plies and modifieds. We now have more wind zones, larger wind zones, uh, where we have increased fasteners and, and, and heavier duty systems that's driving cost of roof replacements and new roof installations. Well, coatings are, are exempt from that. We're not out there analyzing wind speeds, right? The, the, we're not installing new roofs. Uh, we're restoring what you have existing. Uh, so we don't have that consideration where code may be driving cost increases from previous year's budgets. Uh, our budgeting tools that we have in place are still kind of here. And, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice way, if you have a roof that's a potential for a restoration to avoid some of that additional cost right now. Um, a nice case study here, uh, we talk about, you know, can be significantly less of an investment to re-roof than to uh, coat and restore a roof system. So we look at um, a, a nine to fifteen dollar square foot investment on a on your typical twenty thousand square foot building, uh, you know, an average two hundred sixty thousand dollar expenditure, and it's an investment into a building. But when we look at a coating, if it's a properly maintained roof system, um, you know, you can be uh, eighty thousand dollars. So we're we're talking one hundred eighty thousand dollar difference here uh, of the potential investment cost. So. You know, two big takeaways here, maintain your roof so they can be coated when they get to the end of their life cycle. Make sure we pay attention to it and catch problems early. And if we do that properly, uh, you know, we get 20 years down the road, you can very well be looking at a situation where we can coat rather than replace. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other benefits that didn't come up as well in the conversation earlier about coatings, but, uh, you know, I like to talk about waste stream a lot. Uh, I also handle our solar energy business, so environmental concerns are big, but you know, every time we have to tear off a roof, that's more tonnage in a landfill. And when we coat these roofs, we're avoiding that entire waste stream. So from an environmental perspective, uh, coatings are also um, a very good solution. Um, and one other thing I thought was cool that didn't come up, we talk about solids. Uh, tropical silicone, I believe, is 99% solid. 
Uh, what does that mean? There is nothing evaporating solvents into the, uh, into the universe. It's very clean. Uh, what you're paying for stays on the roof. You'll see uh, a lot of silicone manufacturers, uh, stuff that you can buy at Home Depot being 80 to 90% solids. That means that 20, 10 to 20% of this is uh, just evaporating out its solvents. Um, so a lot of good stuff there as well. Surface preparation, certainly one of the most important things that we can look at when we, when we start getting uh, mobilized onto a job, right? Um, if you don't have adhesion, you don't have anything at all. We talked about why trapped moisture, a wet roof system doesn't qualify. And it's basically because once we encapsulate this entire roof system, once it starts to heat up, if there is moisture there, it'll blister and delaminate that roof. Well, the same thing can happen with improperly prepared surfaces. Uh, if we don't get that proper adhesion, we don't get that roof cleaned, primed appropriately, and then most importantly, do our own peel testing on it, right? We, we need to be out there and after it's been prepared, start testing it and, and looking at it. But this comes down to just quality control, qualifications, and craftsmanship. Um, and we definitely recommend you hire a qualified contractor. Um, but the, the, the degree of cleaning, you know, we have to pay close attention to it. Every roof is different. Uh, if you have a lot of animal fats because of a kitchen, uh, you know, your, your level of cleaning could might be different than just an industrial warehouse where there's nothing ever has been on the roof or exhausted onto the roof. Um, so a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff to look at there as well. Um, go ahead and hit the next slide, Bill. So I'm going to hand it over to Pablo, I believe, for moisture survey and adhesion tests, and uh, they're going to take the reins again. I would also Thanks, like sir. to add one. Oh, oh you're, you went on mute accidentally, Richard. Um, that did. I was just saying that the, the one thing I wanted to add, you did an excellent job there talking about the benefits. But one of the other things with reflective coatings is there's a lot less wear and tear on the air conditioner units. They cycle much less frequently as long as there's heat off of the roof. And that's an added benefit that we've seen a, a lot of effect from. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Clint. Uh, yeah, so now we're gonna talk about those moisture series. What we uh, discussed earlier about the initial um, uh, roof inspection qualifying the roof to see whether or not it would be a good candidate for roof coating. Um, by the Florida Building Code, there is a moisture content, a moisture saturation content within the roofing surface that uh, once you achieve that threshold, which is 25%, um, we, uh, or you wouldn't be able to coat, you wouldn't be able to re-roof, you would have to tear off. So if more than 25% of a total roofing surface is saturated, that's the threshold where there's not really much of an option at that point. Um, how are these moisture surveys done? Typically, um, when they're making the assessment, you get a, a hired consultant who will go out and he will um, implement certain tests on the roof in order to determine whether there's moisture uh, trapped uh, within the assembly. Uh, some of those tests that they do are um, uh, moisture scan through electrical impedance. They use an electrical current, uh, pass it through the roofing system uh, to see if there's any fluctuations. Uh, that would uh, indicate that there's moisture trapped in those areas. Uh, they use a thermal scan using infrared or FLIR technology. Um, that's using uh, the, the heat scanner to see where, where there's warm spots and cold spots. Again, indicative of areas of trap. Uh, moisture. Uh, there's the nuclear uh, roof moisture gauge, uh, which is a little more accurate than the uh, thermal scans, and two can be used in conjunction with the other two to determine where the moisture is in the roof. Uh, of course, they go out, they physically inspect the roof, see if there is any noticeable areas for water entry. Um, and then sometimes, yeah, they need to go and pour the roof. They need to go that core sometimes has to be sent to a lab to do a, a test to see whether or not there is demonstrable moisture trapped within uh, the assembly. Uh, ultimately, yeah, all of that is for the qualified roofer, for the reputable roofer who is gonna offer you know, a solid type of solution. That is part and parcel with their initial inspection. That's something that they usually go 
And it's good practice to know and have that, especially if you're having issues with your roof already. Um, so now the next uh, part, uh, oh, the adhesion test, I'm sorry. The, there's, uh, in some instances on the uh, surface of the roof or the condition of the roof is so severe or uh, you have a coating already applied on the roof that makes putting another coating on top of the questionable. Um, there is a test called the adhesion test that you use. It's pretty basic. You uh, get some one inch strips of fabric and you embed them into the coating that you wish to uh, test onto the surface of the roof. And then um, several days a week uh, will pass and you go back and you pull up on those uh, pieces of uh, fabric. Um, and then you get your PPI, which is your pounds per inch force, um, which then will tell you whether or not you have proper adhesion. Usually when we do these field tests, either I'll do them, uh, the qualified contractor will do them, or we have a uh, technical services group that they'll go and conduct these. Um, they'll go and, and, and do these tests. Um, pretty easy. Uh, next slide, okay. So now we're on to the quality control methods. What are these things that the guys will do when they're doing the inspections? What are the guys doing as they're uh, installing the coatings? how are they determining how much product they're using or how much product has been installed onto the roof. Um, and you have some of these uh, methods and tools that are used. Uh, the first is gridding. Uh, gridding is pretty basic. What they do is they measure off uh, quadrants on the roof and uh, tell the guys to paint into those quadrants a, a certain amount of material, which would pertain to the millage that they're trying to achieve with the specification. So once he's done and painted, you know, if it's chalked off, if it's two by fours, uh, cans to, to delineate where these quadrants begin and end, they'll paint in those areas and then they'll move on to the next one. Uh, ensuring that they are putting down the same amount of material evenly uh, and getting uh, the proper millage that they need. Um, now the wet mill gauge is that uh, that credit card looking uh, uh, tool there, that's used to field test the millage. So when it's wet, they can go and they can gauge how much material they're using so they don't have overage. Dry mill testing, you use calipers. Um, the optometric, uh, optom optometric comparator is a handheld magnifying glass that you'll cut a slit of the cured product and then measure it to see if you have the correct mills. And then the thermometer and hygrometer, like we talked about, um, are used to measure the temperature. Hygrometer measures the humidity, um, not just uh, ambient temperature and humidity, but also on the surface of the roof, which sometimes is necessary for uh, application, proper application. Next slide, Bill. All right, so here is the science lesson, something that uh, Clint had talked about, uh, about the mills. Any liquid that you uh, apply over, uh, 100, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one square, 100 square feet section uh, in one gallon uh, increment will yield 16 mils. So that's any, um, any liquid that you, you think of, milk, beer, gravy, spaghetti sauce, anything that you put down at one gallon over 100 square feet will be at 16 wet mils. The issue or the determinant, the, the differentiator between those liquids is how much is left over after it dries or in the case of the coatings, uh, when it cures. Uh, Clint said it was 99, uh, the tropical products about 97% solids. Uh, either way, it's basically all of the silicone that you put on the, uh, the surface is going to stay on the surface. It's not gonna evaporate. It's not gonna wash off. Uh, compare that to a, a, an acrylic that has 50% and it's basically, you're gonna have to put double the amount of acrylic onto the roof to get the same type of millage. So this is key in determining how much a job's ultimately gonna cost and how, how long what you coat is going to last on your roof. Next slide. And now it is time for a poll. Um, the question is going to be true or false. A coating is not eligible for a 20 year roof warranty or 20 year warranty. Coating is not eligible. What do you guys think? Most of you said false, and that is true. 
It is true that it's false. <laughs> so yes, you can get a 20 year warranty with, um, with a, uh, a roof coated. Of course, it's going to be predicated on something that one's gonna talk about, uh, preventative maintenance and having regular service conducted on the roof. Um, and you see, let's say there are two types of warranties that manufacturers offer. Contractors are, will offer their own, I'll let Clint discuss that um, on his time, but uh, the manufacturer side, there's two different types. There's the material only, which covers just the uh, material defect. And then you have the uh, labor material warranties. The material uh, only warranties typically are free of charge and there's less scrutiny uh, put in onto those because it's just dealing with the, the uh, quality of the product. And also if there's any defect with the product, the installation, workmanship, um, all of these things do not apply. The, oh, the one stipulation though, is that they do need to follow the specification and they do need to put down the proper uh, adequate uh, coating and components in order to qualify for material. Now the labor material, um, that warranty is, a, there's a little more uh, involvement with the manufacturer. Uh, we require um, that they, uh, Qualified roofer goes and does an initial substrate inspection. He checks to see the condition of the roof. And we also require that moisture scan. We need to verify that there's no saturation in the roof. This um, um, will ensure that when they put down the, the, the coatings that they will not uh, uh, prematurely uh, weather or, or fail to laminate uh, because of uh, trapped moisture um, in the roof. Now, um, one very important part as I said, they're gonna speak about this a little more, is having a service preventative maintenance uh, uh, program set up where you have biannual inspections on your roof uh, before and after storm season. Uh, it's imperative to have these uh, inspections done. And with that, I'll let Clint kind of describe what all he needs uh, or what they will do when they do an inspection. Go ahead, Clint. Yeah, uh, thanks again, Pablo. So, you know, one big thing we like to talk about is is preventative maintenance and, and making sure we're managing an asset and not just letting our roof be out of sight and out of mind. And that's why we continue to talk about inspections. And much like going to the doctor for a checkup or getting your oil changed in your car, these are things that can extend your life and make the quality of your life or your 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 uh, the quality of life of your roof a, a lot better. So things that we're looking for when we're out looking at inspections, debris, it sounds like, uh, you know, hey, uh, that what do I need to look for debris for? But debris holds water, which will rapidly deteriorate a roof. It also allows things to grow. I mean, you can't imagine how many tropical oasis we find growing out of roof drains and in the corner of roofs. Uh, roots have uh, the ability to take hold in some of the craziest places and, and essentially just tearing up roofs. I can even, I've even seen them tear up structural walls. Um, we're also out there reapplying uh, coatings in areas where there might be significant uh, wear and tear around your vent stacks or expansion joints of parapet walls and vertical seams, places that tend to uh, just wear over time. Uh, we're also out there just re-upping on sealants at your metal terminations and at any of the collars on penetration. So really kind of taking care of those day-to-day -day items, just like oil changes and, um, you know, uh, putting new belts in, things that wear, you know, your car itself might look great, but if the engine doesn't start, it's worthless. Uh, and that's, that's, a, that's the similar kind of mentality around taking care of these uh, maintenance items, these, these items that come up over time. And can you push them two or three or four years? Can you go that long without changing your oil? Yes, but what'll happen in year five or year seven uh, is, is you have a catastrophic failure. You know, one thing that people kind of fail to do often and is, is these, what we would call an immediate inspection. Uh, you have hurricane season coming. It's highly recommended that you get out and on top of your asset and look at, look at your roof, make sure you don't have uh, things that are suspect to damage, uh, door hinges that are that are that are poorly installed, not properly locking, uh, HVAC panels up on your roof that might be loose. Uh, you know, it, I can tell you, 180 mile an hour wind will find any weaknesses that you have. So we're out there to try to help you uh, come up and 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 get out in front of those problems before they become big problems. Uh, but also in times when you're doing construction projects. 
I can tell you foot traffic and other contractors are one of the leading causes as to why we get uh, service calls. So documenting the condition of the roof that you're that you have, it, it's documenting its condition before you get started is a, is a big way to avoid issues down the road of finger pointing as to, well, it was like this when I got here, um, you know, sorry, it's not my problem. Well, maybe it was, or maybe it wasn't, but if you don't document it beforehand, uh, it can come up to a big, a big question. Uh, we've had some Q and A going back and forth. I see they're getting answered. Uh, ben had asked uh, about does a coding trigger a, an upgrade to the current code having to raise your HVAC units? Uh, the answer is no, it's treated as restoration um, and, and repair as long as it's not a reinforced roof system. Uh, so that's a big one to, to look at. Um, we had also had another question about um, depreciation and it's a bit of a dated question. So back in 2017, uh, the IRS changed the code. There is no longer a 39 year depreciation cycle for, uh, for a roof asset. So up to a million dollars of your, your roof expense can be uh, depreciated in the first year, whether it's a roof replacement or a roof repair. Uh, prior to the tax code change under the previous administration, uh, repairs were depreciable in the first year and replacements needed to be depreciated over 39 years. Uh, so that is a big tax consideration for, uh, you know, tax uh, taxable entities, anything that's owned by a corporation or an LLC. So what are our key takeaways from today? Hopefully we left you with uh, a lot of good information, some education. Uh, we're definitely leaving you with those budgeting tools. I did see a Q&A. It looks like it's been answered on the uh, average price of, um, of uh, silicone coatings. I can tell you that at large scale, we can see silicone coatings go as low as $3 a foot uh, up to 5 to $6 a foot, depending on just complexity and mobilization costs. Uh, so they're kind of in that middle range of that 250 to eight that we talked about. Um, had another Q&A question just come in from Seth. How do coatings affect uh, insurance on buildings versus tear offs? If you're in a situation where uh, your insurance company, someone like uh, Factory Mutual, FM Global, or whoever your carrier might be, is pushing on the attachment of the uh, roof system or the installation of the roof system, coatings cannot help you from that perspective. So we won't provide additional strength uh, or resistance to hurricanes from just installing a coating by itself. Uh, but if it's just a, uh, a, a water intrusion standpoint, uh, we do see that come uh, as well. Um, your chart on products mentions that a rebate uh, is that manufacturer, government, or FPNL? Uh, FPNL and the government haven't had rebates on reflective coatings in quite some time. There was a large FPNL program uh, years ago that's been discontinued. Uh, so that rebate is uh, manufacturer driven or can be manufacturing driven. So, Clint, we had one more question. Uh, it was emailed in uh, for bro <clears throat> low slope deck systems like Loadmaster. What kind of coding would you recommend? Uh, so, yeah, Loadmaster is a, a specialty deck that needs uh, that has to have a certain insulation system for it to create its diaphragm. Uh, the coding really does not affect that whatsoever, so it wouldn't be a consideration. Loadmaster would want to know if we were taking that insulation package out or providing new mechanical attachment through the insulation system and into the Loadmaster deck itself. So uh, a coding really would not have a, a, an interaction with the Loadmaster conversation. Uh, we, we would be happy to engage them, but we, we've never seen where Loadmaster came back with any sort of technical uh, questioning whether or not a coding was, was appropriate or not. Awesome. I think we got, appreciate that, Clinton. I think we all have questions. I think Rob wants to wrap us up. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's time uh, and we're wrapping up at the uh, top of the hour here. Just want to thank everybody. One of the biggest takeaways is what's going on in the industry. There's a lot of roll ups in every every facet of business in today's world. And the same is in coatings. A lot of these large manufacturers are glomming up these coating manufacturers. And it's so important to go with somebody that's going to be there if you do have a problem. I'm seeing, and as big as we are, one the largest manufacturer of roofing materials 
turned us down for a roof walk inspection because the acquiring entity, the venture capitalist people got to their desk and they would not even come out for a simple inspection. So the good news is, you know, you got a company and a manufacturer here. My cell number is 954-275-8245. Richard stands behind everything that he's ever done. We do as well. But there's a lot that with coatings, it's very technical, especially the millage. We've seen it over and over again. Coating manufacturers, they have a warranty and they walk away from it because they say it wasn't prepared properly or the millage wasn't there. And even though you got this piece of paper that says you have a warranty, they walk from it. I see them walk on coatings, probably on a 10 to 1 ratio from a re-roofing project. Coating manufacturers are really known for using that warranty against you. So just take a good look. There are some good manufacturers out there. There's good contractors out there. Just do your due diligence and make sure you do the right thing. And uh, we're here for you. Thanks again for uh, spending the time with us. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Um, and we have uh, some up upcoming webinars as well. Um, Richard, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying thanks to Rob. But, but Rob is correct. Our industry has changed dramatically over the years. We've had, we used to be, kind of the bottom of the roofing industry. Companies like Dow Chemical, Huntsman, et cetera, have helped us up our game. All of the large companies have gotten into the coding business. They've legitimized the coding business, but yet the coding business requires a manufacturer's special touch with the contractor. It's not meant for everybody. It requires a manufacturer who knows what he's doing, working with a contractor who knows what they're doing. And this is why we like working with companies like Advance. They appreciate the steps that we're taking and we appreciate the steps that they're taking. It makes for a much more long-lived protective kind of situation, which is what we're all looking for. I often say that we all sell comfort. And I think when you go with advanced roofing, you're gonna be comfortable. This is the same thing we've tried to do with, you're gonna be comfortable with your purchase. This is exactly what we've tried to do with our business. So thanks, Rob, we appreciate being on board. Yeah, thanks to everybody. Thanks to the panelists. Great job, everybody.